Yep, I got all achievements for Monkey Game in 57 hours. Good job, bro. In my defense, I am Asian and loved the TV show, which means I can explain most of the cutscenes you experience during your normal playthrough. Anyways, enough yapping. Now let's get into the video. In the beginning, I play as Sum, Hong Cantonese for Sun Wukong. There are consequences to killing a god. There are also consequences for killing a bunch of monkeys. To avoid responsibility, the heavenly court sends in Erlang Shen, the god who managed to beat Sum, Hong previously. But now he is a two-time monkey slaying champion. Sum Hong's death inspired a lot of lesser monkeys to gather six of his scattered relics in hopes of reviving him. As soon as the opening credits ended, I got my first ever achievement. For now, I play as a random monkey with aspiring hopes to become the destined one. While exploring the first area of the game, I noticed a fellow monkey who then scurried off into the distance. I worry about that later as I stumbled upon my first ever boss. After a couple of swings, he stumbled and fell. Okay, easy. Now taste my big long stick. Bitch, oh, nobody shit. want that weak ass shit. Ay, ay, ay. Hey, what? Before I get pulverized by the axe, a sorcerer stepped in to save my skin. He was also generous to teach me the spell used to immobilize the boss, which is particularly deadly towards Mexicans. And after defeating the bow guard, <laughs> I meditated to balance my chi. I then further explored the area and found my second boss encounter. Okay. Did he just bite and blast me? That's crazy. Maybe I'll come back later. I then avoided the wandering white and made an unexpected discovery. I swear to god, every corner of the map has some boss in it. I'm not gonna lie, this guy is way easier than the wandering white. I was hoping I can get a new flame weapon, but was disappointed that it was just a summon. There's also a bell at the end of the boss fight, so instinctively I rang it. With my first boss defeated, I felt confident enough to challenge the wandering white again. It's over, it's over, it's over. Upon defeat, the boss dropped a protrescent flame. Strangely enough, I can't get it yet. Anyways, I protruded deeper into the arena and found myself a large temple, which was guarded by the formidable Ling Susi. What? What? That's crazy! Just take me to the grave, brother. I don't deserve to bear Wukong's name. Psych, let me just upgrade my armor real quick. Which was sufficient enough for me to see the end of the battle. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cool! I looted the treasures inside the temple, one of them being a maximum health upgrade. Wow, a hidden area in the game where there isn't a boss? That's refreshing. Also, my NPC in Christ, why the long face? Anyways, after exhausting the horse NPC's dialogue, I came across another NPC, who then suddenly yoinked my Estes flask and wrote something on it, which granted me the ability to absorb spirits. Excuse me, why did they put a frog boss in here? This just gives immense PTSD. Thank god you are way easier than the legend Octobogdo himself. It dropped its soul upon its demise, and upon sucking it off, I got the Absorb and Cultivate trophy. I then beat the Guangwu boss standing in my way and rung the bell in the boss arena. Wow, Snake, why are you bullying a fellow monkey? I don't know, man, it looks suspiciously racist. To thank me for saving his life, he offered his services as a god connoisseur, in which I used to get the Brew of Bravery achievement. The modification is much needed as I squared off against the white clad Nobo. Oh my god, that's huge! Aha, you can't run, motherfucker. You can't run. Ah. Realizing our potential, the noble embraced his serpentine form, but it was too late to take me seriously. Turns out he's guarding the third bell in the chapter. And with all three bells rung, a hidden temple is revealed, which also unlocks the Enduring Echoes achievement. To prepare, I upgraded my staff, as well as some armor pieces. Inside the hidden temple resides the Elder Jinchi, who is also the Wandering White in the physical realm. Unlike the latter, he partakes in battle meditation, which he heals by sacrificing zombies around him. Other than that, he's pretty easy. Enemy! 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 <laughs> Defeating the elder allowed us to exit the hidden realm and obtain the fireproof mantle. I then carried on exploring the rest of the map, which rewarded me with a mana upgrade as well as a meditating spot. But then I explored too much and stumbled into the private quarters of the Black Wind King. This looks like a giant from Clash Royale. <laughs> For a king, you are pretty weak. Zero aura. Enemy! Enemy! Salty of our summon, he demand a rematch at the top of the mountain. However, the enemy left behind a powerful residue, of which our friendly sorcerer friend used to create the cloud step spell, which I should have used to evade the pesky archers. Eventually, I reached the summit of the mountain, where the first of Sum Hong's six relics is guarded. Before I could get my hands on the relic, the rematch has officially begun. Yeah, my frames. Oh my god, 15 FPS. That's crazy.
even with its true form, the bear Gwai still fights like a cornered animal, and is no match for my ever-burning resolve. Fearing for his life, the black bear Gwai surrendered to the relic, which I assume haunts a cute pair of eyes. As I bathed in his power, we also get a glimpse back in the past. This guy is Elder Jinji. During his childhood, he bonded with the black bear Gwai because both of them are greedy at the core. Although he did become a monk, his greed still remains. During the events of Journey of the West, or Sayaoge in Cantonese, Tong Sanzan shares his kasok to the elder, impressed by the design he wants it for himself, in which the same sentiments can be shared with the black bear Guai as well. His disciples Guang Qi and Guang Mu suggest arson to kill the gang. However, Sun Hong deflected those flames back at them, burning elder Jin Qi's temple. Devastated by his greed, he eventually killed himself. During the first, the black bear Guai stole Tang San Zhang's robes, then he got his ass beat by Sun Hong. As punishments, he played the role of Guan Yin's disciple to learn the ways of Buddhism. Anyways, it's time to move on to chapter 2. The source is from a headless singer, and for this chapter he serves as our guide. For my first baby steps, I found the lamb brew drink and the yellow skinned octobogdo. I don't know what he ate, but it's definitely some car batteries. After putting the beast down, I was awarded with the medicine recipe, which was stolen from the Fox Squad NPC, who granted me the ability to brew potions in my shrine. Before leaving me to search for a furnace, I continued on my path and found a village guarded by archers. So I had to take a flank and get inside, which was literally filled with rats, and the abomination that is the earth wolf, which has one of the worst hit bosses I've ever seen on the boss. After putting it out of its misery, <laughs> I reopened the village entrance in which the red archers aren't pleased with. I don't know man why are there full auto on crossbows? What the fuck was the damage? Anyways, I got past the red gang and bumped into the horse NPC again. For fuck's sake guys, can't you see I'm talking to somebody? Well, good luck to you, horse NPC, as I don't have time to deal with pesky archers, as I'm aiming for the king's and princess throat. This fight is easily the funniest out of the game, cause they turn on friendly fire. Get down for the high ground, sir, you are not Obi-Wan Kenobi. Here, I made the mistake of killing the rat's king first, which sends the rat's prince into a big frenzy, and of course I get clapped on my first run. So I chipped them both down to low health, and finished the rat's prince off with a grandeur fashion. Easy. Upon that defeat, I was rewarded with the pungent flesh chunk, which I used to summon the last member of the royal rat authority. Despite its enormous size, it stands no chance against my amazing skills. Upon his death, he dropped the R hat gold piece, which is required for a side quest. After that, I arrived at the Crouching Tiger Temple, which is guarded by the bloodthirsty Tiger Vanguard, who has some fancy katana attacks. Enemy, enemy, oh my god! Kushala Tawa! Kushala Tawa! Reverse of blood! And even uses his bare hands if he thinks we are not a threat. Oh, okay, I see. Both of us miss. He even has the ability to parry my attacks using rock solid form. I'm starting to notice a pattern in how I defeated the boss. From his corpse, we were able to derive the rock solid spell, which is essentially a parry. The tiger's acolyte was also guarding a pedestal, but I needed the sternness of stone to enter. Maybe I'll ask the tiger's acolyte on where that is. That ass? That's so stupid. Let's try that again, shall we? What the fuck was that? That's that's so bullshit. This is like Dark Souls levels of goofiness, I can't even lie. Anyways, I killed that son of a bitch, but instead of the item I want, he drops the old rattle drum. In fact, the sternness of Stone's owner is just right next door. While I was goofing around the area, I heard this. <laughs> I then shake the old rattle drum, which dissipated the grey fog around the area. I also found a boar NPC, and advanced his questline so he appears in the Crouching Tiger's temple. Next to him was a broken Buddha statue, and once I finished interacting with the object, I got the Buddha's eyeball key item. While I was looking for more Buddha statues, I heard the same voice again. Come on kid, I am not a predator, please go away. Anyways, I tracked the kid down to a well. Look officer, I'm not sus, I'm just doing a side quest. Oh hell no, nah. I sent for a meetup with a miner. Instead I got an 8 foot tall tiger, who makes a predator become the prey. This guy makes the first Elden Lord like a joke, as he bombards me with a fury of hands, or should I say paws. Oh my god, that's so cool. Oh, if you're trying to punish him while he's there, good luck, because he does this. 
I can't even see what the move is. Like, it's so bullshit. Anyways, I quit bitching, started getting good and beat his ass. After defeating him, I looted the area and found the Plague Spain Gold. I then continued my search for more Buddha's eyeballs. Defeated the Mother of Fingers. Oh, sorry, I meant Mother of Stones. Who guards the fifth Buddha's eyeball? While looking for my sixth eyeball, I found a miniature golem NPC. Upon using the Mother of Stones essence, he immediately turns hostile. After showing him the ways of the big stick and the big forehead, he reverts back to his passive state and unwillingly gave me the second transformation in the game, the Azure Dust, which I used to hump the strange war in where I fought the first Prince of the Flowing Sands. Just where my transformation expired, a crack appeared, which led me to a chest beyond the wall. Inside the chest was a long scale. Before I had use for that item, I finally found my six Buddha eyes and dumped all of them on the suspicious lump of stone lying in the stone vanguard arena to awaken the shigandang another stone golem boss boulder is conflicted when killing a brethren of his own <laughs> ay, 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 taste defeat. after that i used the long scale to expose a hidden area just beyond the waterfall in chapter one inside it was a red dragon the gimmick for this fight is basically giving him back shots okay actually how about rock back Oh my god, the bash! <laughs> the rock is too hard for him! <laughs> he died! There's also another secret area in chapter 2, which conceals the black dragon boss fight. Initially, his special move was very hard to dodge, and I later realized you can just stand on a rock and avoid that move entirely. The boulder is confused when hitting a stunned opponent! <laughs> it's been a while since I last saw the boar NPC. Maybe he's hiding underneath the blood pool? Oh, you're the fox NBC that we encountered very early on. And you are a licensed doctor that gives me free medicine. Sign me up. It's also in the same cellar that I reunited with the headless NPC, who gave me the plug of many spell. Turns out I've just missed the ball NBC while on my way to the temple. And upon returning to the area where he first started, he becomes hostile. After his ass was kicked, he conceded defeat and asked me to follow him into the large stone doorway, where he explains the backstory of the Sand Kingdom. Once he's done yapping, I got a glimpse of gold achievement. Yeah, I may have missed his warnings, because I opened up the area where the yellow red sage was last seen. While in the area, I bumped into an old friend, and in the eye of the sandstorm, an expected enemy, who proceeded to kick me around like a football. The grab is so fast, like how can I tell? When he's at his final phase, he summons a sand cyclone, which is just classic most underworld behemoth behavior. Fuck off the tornado! He's one of the more harder bosses, which makes it more satisfying for me when I bonk him to death. Turns out the head he has been carrying throughout the battle belongs to the Hella Singer. The, the now complete Bodhisattva explained the reason why his head was chopped off was so that the Yellow Red Sage could use it to harness the power of Wukong's relic. Since I helped him reattach his head back to his shoulders, Sum Hong's ears are now mine. Don't worry, we will be talking about this cutscene later. When the time is right, of course. Before I proceeded to chapter 3, I needed to go back in time to do great battle with another tiger vanguard to meet up with a younger yellow wind sage who lured the sand burning beetle Fuban out of the dune sea. Once the drumming was too much for the beetle Yao Guai to bear, I used the opportunity to snatch the vessel that counters the yellow wind sage's abilities, who then felt more confidence to assist us in battle. You, you fuck! You made me miss! Oh, damn! I didn't know you would chill like that, my guy. With the power of friendship, the armored atrocity goes down. After completing the optional secret area, I obtained the Wind Tamer Vessel, which would be most beneficial for the actual sage fight. Anyways, I arrived in the snowy tundra that is the New West, and was greeted by the unwelcoming Makak chief, who understandably dipped out mid-fight. I continued on my path until I found a temple on the frozen lake, where I was able to reconnect with Sum Hong's third relic. However, the master of the temple, Yellow Brow, was not pleased with our presence, so he ordered and Jinglong, a member of the Celestial Court, to eliminate me. The only thing I can talk about in this fight is just her enormous size which the camera cannot catch up with, which I struggled most of the time to land hits on the thing at all. And I hit the fucking dragon for fuck's sake. The camera is not cooperating. Anyways, our confrontation ended in a stalemate and shared a nice bath together. Taking advantage of the situation, Yellow Brow abducted me and landed me in the Pagoda Realm. I attempted to explore the prison, but the cells were blocked by some sort of magical seal. I instantly fell in love with this POI when this happened.
The cursed pagoda realm makes shit ten times more intense, with intimidating lantern enemies patrolling the area. Once all nine lantern enemies are defeated, the auspicious lantern courier will be awarded, which is required for the curious <laughs> collection trophy. After that, I found one of the prison wardens just chilling, and he's terrible to fight while stuck in the cursed pagoda realm. Anyways, he turned himself into a key item, funniest shit I've ever seen. I managed that one literally as all the prison doors are now accessible. There was a familiar figure dead in one of the lower cells, and once I put the sword sticking out of the chest, I got the Ashen Slumber transformation. To unlock the achievement, start the side quest by talking to some rats hidden in a small house in chapter 2. There's also another NPC in the cell, who demands the souls of four captains. Eventually, I found the second captain chilling on top of the pagoda, who is the mastermind behind cursing the pagoda realm. It was a struggle, but eventually I beat him, and stuffed the second captain's soul inside my jar. His death paved the way for a mysterious ice war, which brought me into the realm of the Great Pagoda, where I'll definitely be revisiting somewhere in the future. I then continued treading on the snow, and bumped into two old friends. Well, only one remained after I drove the macaque chief away. I then had a tea party with the god man, and absorbed the ring of fire around us, which is in fact another spell to our arsenal. Shortly after I retrieved the spell, I stumbled into the confrontation with Kang Jing Star, which was a nice callback to the events in Journey of the West, where I don't know who's in the symbols this time, but I'm definitely gonna need her help once again. Yeah, she's not that cooperative this time around. I tried doing the enemy finisher, but she had other plans. Ah, uh, you ruined the ending, my god! Go back to the kitchen. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Oh, and my game's crashed. That's crazy. What a fucking sexist, you know what I mean? My fault, my fault. On the bright side, I get to beat up a woman for the second time in a row. That's crazy. Well, history has a funny pattern of repeating itself. Now let's see who's the damsel in distress. My boy, gee, that guy. <laughs> After our brief reunion, Juba Jie or Jiba Guy in Cantonese told me to meet him at the turtle's head. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the whole island is in fact a turtle, and Kang Jing Long might not be the only dragon prowling around these parts, as I squared off against the silent dragon. Gotcha, bitch! Shit staying so sweaty, he starts doing combos on my ass. And he just does his most damage attack points blank. What? That was instantaneous. That's crazy. What's, what kind of bullshit design is that? This fight was tough as nails, but after a strategic big forehead, his fighting spirit is no more. Nice. Jesus Christ. Defeating him awarded me with two pieces of golden thread, which are important components in crafting and upgrading armor. I then regrouped with Juba Guy, who he commanded the turtle to head for Bitter Lake. We then arrived at our destination, and in return we offered the turtle to look for his snake pile. Somehow I can't find a large snake, but instead settled for a smaller one. Cut the cameras. Somehow I can't find a large snake, but instead found a smaller one. Who didn't like being called a snake? Eventually we calmed him down, but we kinda crippled him and he needs medical attention, specifically a resurrection. Pill. Thankfully, the only dog I can trust clutched up with the prescription. Turns out he doesn't need the pills at all, that boy be lying. In fact, he's testing me to see if I can earn his trust, which I passed with flying colors. I was then rewarded with access to the homeboys club, with the only way in being sucked by a scroll. With the side quest's completion, I got the secrets in the scroll achievement. I reunited with Chan Long in the boys club, who is pretty contempt with gardening. While I waited for the seeds to grow, I noticed an NPC getting harassed by some Yao guys. We took care of the naggers and left the NPC to b who was murmuring about something of the lines of melons. After acquiring the Blue Bridge Romance drink, it was time to harvest my first batch of seeds. The boys club also had an armorer, who was more than happy to upgrade my pieces of armor. Wait, what's the challenge option? This time I recorded this shit. After besting the armor, I got the ebb and flow transformation, as well as the ability to carry more charms. Oh, remember the big snake guy we promised to find? Well, is that overcome with grief, the turtle guy shed a tear for his friend. I inspected the tear drop, which granted me the shells and scales trophy. While I resumed my journey, I stumbled upon an obese kid who got the secrets towards the path, which is just praying to some Buddha statues. With that, the path forward is revealed, where I was able to spot the monkey I met in chapter one again. Although he was able to slip away once more, he left behind the scandal of thought, which I looted away almost immediately. 
immediately, which reminded me to go back and collect the scandal of form. Before I proceeded to the next location, the enemy non white stands in my way. I wish this game implemented more staff parry mechanics, that would be even more cool. Oh, I also changed this name from non white to non living, and further progressed into the valley of ecstasy, where I picked up a blue version of Octobogdo, a ginseng Groot variant, and I found the Mela NPC shivering in the corner. To warm his insides, I used the Ring of Fire spell and learned more about the origins of the mysterious melons. Although I tracked the origins of the melon field, there aren't no melons inside. Instead, I was confronted by a Kong La wannabe. Remember Bone Wheels from Dark Souls 1? Yup, they're back and they just roll like for 2 minutes. Oh, the boss definitely fights back, but that shit's weak. After beating his ass, I got the marvelous melon achievement. Turns out it was just a test from the obese child, who then taught me the ways of the spellbinder spell. I resumed my main quest and found something right out of Armored Core 6, the Coral Convergence, which took form to be the final fourth captain. I would say he is truly one of the bosses of all time. After taking the fourth and third captain's souls, I backtracked and returned all the captain's souls to the NPC, which unlocked the corrupted captain's trophy for me. Finally arrived in a new thunderclap tempo, where I obtained the see no evil headpiece from my blind monk, caught up with the horse NPC once again, and obtained the whole frost transformation. Oh, remember this guy? There are three more of his associates I needed to wipe out. And the last guy so happens to kill the fox squire in the chapter 2 cutscene, which was actually evil. Source? It happened to me in a dream. Although the monk felt bad about it afterwards, the fox did not appreciate that. So she lets me borrow her form for a brief moment to do a little bit of tomfoolery. First, bring up emotional trauma to the old man's life. Then, we take advantage of the situation and transform into our original self so we can beat his ass properly. Finally, stick that old man's soul into a jar and bring peace to the innocent fox so to get the lust and dust trophy. Finally, I entered the last room in the thunderclap temple where Yellow Brow was already anticipating me. Salty of his disciples getting stuffed in the jar, I in turn got sucked into his large sack. I never knew I would be getting my third run back against Malakath the Black Blade. It was a close one, but the cooler monkey always comes out on top. The fights got even more better when Yellowbrow himself decided to intervene and tossed me inside his house of horrors. <laughs> oh my god, that's so, feels so satisfying. Ching! However, the very cool transformation didn't last very long in the final phase. No, you ruined it! Motherfucker. Jesus' entire game here is just encasting himself with a golden armor, which can be easily bypassed by a fully charged heavy attack. Other than that, he's pretty manageable. Three faces are a bit long though. And finally, with the help of the obese kid, we're able to retrieve the third relic and arrived in the Jew estate in chapter 4. I instantly found one of them just chilling at the end of the settlement. Ooh, get fucked from behind. I would literally do it to her in real life. Just kidding! While retreating, the second sister or spider shot a tranquilizing needle to Jibakai, who doesn't give a flying fuck and just runs into the obvious death trap. To be fair, I also did the same, but unlike Jibakai, I'm the main character, and just as I thought I was lunch for the spider ladies, they carried me to a bed and left me be. They even left me some parting gifts. I mean, I do have some unspoken risks for real, for real. While looking for Jibakai, I discovered my first ever scorpion enemy, which I have to kill four more for the A Family Finished achievement. It's also here in the pool of Shattered Jade, where I squared off against the Phantom Daoist. During this specific encounter, it is in your best interest to break all of his rear appendages. You will know when you break them, when all of a sudden you deal massive chunk damage. It's also best to use Cloud Step and Immobilize to chip away his arms. If you get him down to a total of 4 arms, he retreats from the fight, and you get the Venomous Arm Guard. While exploring the webbed hollow, I was being tracked by the fourth sister. She can't bad though. She ain't lying though, the loot is actually good. I eventually found her trying to remove a purple talisman, but to no avail. Guess someone doesn't like those spider girls to be roaming around free. Not me though. While still searching for Chibak guy, I got distracted and killed my second scorpion. Killed a rather short centipede, destroyed an innocent proto armor worm, caught up with the horse NBC once again, and removed the second purple talisman. Mirror mirror on the wall, who's the ugliest of them all? Oh, it's not me. Oh yeah. yeah, you're definitely the ugly type. As a representative of the world, let me get rid of this ugliness. You go girl, slay! For now, Jibak guy can wait as I explored more of the webbed hollow and discovered the relief of the fallen dragon, where I killed my third scorpion, removed my third magic charm, and found the best boss in the game, the yellow dragon. The reason? He parries your attacks like a giga chat. Ooh, that's actually cool. Though I was able to one-up him a couple of times. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, I don't believe he liked that one. Jesus! Oh! Oh! Fuck! Fuck! However, this fight brought up terrible issues regarding the camera. I can't even see the camera! And that double cross slash. That quick slash is so obnoxious. My god. Close enough. Welcome back, Radan. Oh my god! Finish the story! 
Yes! That was a that was actually a, a fun fight, I'm not gonna lie. After the beef was squashed, I picked up his glaive and earned his transformation. Damn, I thought Chewbacca was pork, but he's still alive after three hours of side questing. Piss off, Octobok though. Don't worry, brother, I'm here to bail you out. Guess I have to do it the hard way then. Surely the old woman didn't give you good head, right? <laughs> Dang, I guess you did. Oh! Still mind controlled, he transformed into a feral hawk and unleashed a whole barrage of transformations, making me wait for five years until he flops over in the mud like a complete loser. Your transformations are so cool, Jubak guy. Anyways, check out this cool combo I've been practicing. Jesus. Dang, Jubak guy fell off since his celestial court days, huh? Minus horror. Just put the fries in the back, little bro. As you can see, bullying is very effective in removing foreign objects from your body. Anyways, welcome back, my pigger. What did he say? Oh, oh never mind. For now, I got the blood stained needle, which will be very important for later. While looking for Jibaka, I found the wandering monkey chilling on a Buddha's head once again, in which I obtained the Skanda of choice. And after defeating my fourth scorpion, I arrived just in time to see some freaky family business. Boo! Listen, I did not have any sexual relationships with that woman! Well, Jibaka, you have to pay your side piece a millennia of child support after I whoop her ass. Never mind, I was not familiar with your game. Oh, Big Head always wins! Man, you can just run away, that's cheating! Before I could bail out Jibaka, I alerted the horde. Alright, time to go. Jesus Christ. Oh my fucking god! Mine, 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 mine. Well, I cannot just outrun the horde forever. Before I can say my prayers, the fourth sister came in clutch once again. Thank you, my beloved. Anyways, I'm stuck in the court of illusion. Oh, hey, a rare RNG drop. I took my time to catch up with the god man, murdered the court's inhabitants, Ooh. and removed the fourth magic talisman I've come across. Be free, fourth sister. Not if anything I have to say about it. A few moments later. Stop, please. It was just a misunderstanding. <laughs> Oh, thank you, stranger. You know what? I'll take back everything I said about you. Fuck you. We do a little trolling. Did you know what you just did? She is real to me! I swear to God, I'll find you lacking one day in the celestial court and shove your curved beak right up your fucking ass! Anyways, what's this place? Ah, so this is the place where you wanted your rematch, huh? After breaking the rest of his rear arms, he shrugged it off like nothing ever happened and went straight for phase two. Even with that, you're not strong enough to bypass my power. I then investigated the mural that the Venom Daoist is protecting. And guess what? It's a painted world. And right after I traversed through the portal, I got the secret in purple cloud achievement. Mangro Intruda. Oh, hello there, my gracious drunken scorpion lord. It would be a shame for someone to destroy your rum bucket and fight you just out of spite and trophy hunting. Oh my god. Oh. Jesus Christ, kill yourself. Jesus. Like, when are your combos gonna end? Like, this is. Oh my god, can you heal? What the fuck was the combo? What the fuck? That's so BS. Your combos never end. Like this is this is the worst example you can take from Elden. Oh my fucking Christ! You suck so much ass. <sighs> Finally, that sucker's out of the way. Who are you? Alright, fam. Say less. Oh, sup man, here's the item you wanted. I certainly hope he won't be corrupted by the amalgamation of eggs. Damn, I guess I have to work on my scripting. And you, you have to work on your fighting. Truly one of the soldiers of Godrick of all time. Mongro Intruda, what are you doing here? Mamalady, I'm sorry for insulting you. Sorry, you are not a Mongrel intruder. Anyways, the snake white returns the violet husk back to me, which will be a fine addition to my spell collection. Finally, with everything done in the secret area, it is now finally time to face off against the Dusk Fell. Well, that first face is a little bit easy, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it's a. It's a. It, it has a. Shut up, bitch! Lock the fuck in, bruh. Pfft. 
<sighs> After my victory over the Dusk Veil, the Snake Woman used the Bloodstained Needle to absorb the creature's power and create the Weaver's Needle Vessel. And now there's only one place where I could test it. Turns out the old hack we fought before has the relic, but not anymore as the 100 Eyes Dyers absorb this power to power up for the battle against me. Yes, jump in my Powerpuff Girls. Never mind, they all got scared. Let the real boys handle the business. Oh wait, what the hell is this? Oh shit. Undisputedly one of the best phase 2 transitions I've ever seen. Remember the Weaver's Needle? It becomes most effective here where it disables the 100 Eye Dao's powers. And also a good opportunity for damage. Even with 100 Eyes and an epic transformation, he still can't see the truth that the battle here is already lost. Good. Well, there goes a saying. No one truly wins in a battle. Without the relic to sustain her life any longer, Jiba Guy's beloved Ziju knocks on death's door. And with her last breath, <sighs> Pain. Now I'm explain why Jiba Guy gave her the cold shoulder. He used to be an admiral of the celestial court. One day he fell in love with the Chinese goddess of the moon. During his pursuit of love, he bumped into one of the Chang'e's that served the moon goddess. Anyways, this Chang'e fell in love with him instantly. But Jiba Guy had other priorities. Sweet beloved, where you at? Whoops, never mind, she fell for the Jade Emperor, I guess. Well, the Jade Emperor can't have anyone knowing that he had a secret affair, so he banished Jiba Guy to the mortal realm and stripped him of his prestigious rank. Once he arrived, he mistook another girl for Chang'e, and the petty motherfuckers at the Celestial Court can't pick up more perfect time to prank him. <laughs> Anyways, during the events of Journey of the West, the gang ran into a bunch of spider guys. One of them is the same Chang'e that he lost. And once they met again since the Celestial Court days, they instantly recognized each other, and soon, love blossomed. The reason why she transformed into a spider is that the pig and spider pronunciations in Chinese are the same, which is Zhu and Zhu in Cantonese, and Zhu and Zhu in Mandarin. Basically, she got confused on what Zhu Ba Gai turned into in the mortal realm. But it doesn't matter, a person sacrificing their emotions Mortality just to love another that's touching. This this uh This just a spider in the pig! Why is this emotional? Oh, fuck's sake! Why this uh don't uh, man, man The only thing it copied from Souls like is I feel sorry for the enemies like come on why It hurts us to watch. I can't. I think this scene, this game deserves game of the year, and it's not even close. <sighs> My god. <sighs> My, I, I cut some good onions right there, Jesus. God damn. Peak. <laughs> this is just peak storytelling. Absolute cinema. Well, I'll bet the cuts that weeping, and it's now time for chapter 5. Last one's yours, dog. Charge him. W. One of the first things I encountered was a bow NPC who warned me about the existence of cart enemies. And the first cart is literally right next to him. After I give it a mean old headbutt and encountering the father of stones. Oh my god, the ass is so big. And after defeating the whole ass bakery, I stumbled upon the second cart enemy. Oh great, in a fucking small ass corridor. Excuse me, sir, you are blocking the way. Please, Skedado. Oh, that was a cool ass finish. Help me, young master, I'm stuck in the washing machine. It's a fox? God dang it, the fest sets me up. Oh, get the fuck out of the sky, little bitch! Ah, yes, call me a stick because I'm well done! Anyways, that boss fight was pretty easy and a waste of my time. Once the coast is clear, the fox guy revealed her identity as Peng Peng, the Bow King's daughter. God damn. Despite having a vendetta with Ju Ba Gai, Peng Peng chose to be the bigger man and guided us to the Ashen Lake, where dozens of flamings bombarded me with their fireballs and an inanimate cart. For now, I'll leave him be as there are more bigger fish to fry. Unlike the first duel fight, this fight is way harder, and I had to use everything in my arsenal just to barely edge up a win. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. With those two gone, I'm finally able to set foot in Rashasha's palace, where I was able to upgrade my god to the max level and unlocked an achievement. After that, I faced the Keeper of the Flaming Mountains, who can't be bothered to fight us, so he used his fish instead. Normally, you don't do much damage. However, if you have the tenacity to change your skin color to white, you can deal more damage towards the black fish. That's gotta be racist. Put your hands up. Stop resisting. Easy. I then continued on my path and destroyed the third cut enemy I see, so I can finally pull the plug on the disabled cut enemy in the lava lake and got myself another transformation spell. We were eventually getting closer to the bow king, but the rampant fire still stand in our path. So Ping Ping had to use the princess iron fan to uh, obviously extinguish the flames. Now the path to the bow king is clear, as well as a hidden path, which leads to the flint vanguard and the annoying mother of flamings. Cause every time she retreats underground, she always summons a gang of flamings. The science ain't there, game science. What part of this is actually fun? After killing that bitch, I backtracked and killed every plant-based enemy in the game. Oh, what's up, man? I've had so much fun destroying those cards. Don't worry, I'll let you get a piece out of the fifth and final card. Or reverse it and get pieced up by the card instead. Unlike you, I don't possess such weaknesses. Just like other side character, the bow NPC is five chapters too deep and has to be written off the show. But actually, his sacrifice is required to open the only ice door in this kingdom of fire. Beyond the ice wall lies the bow king's choice of weapon, probably. And without warning, teleported me to another location, which unlocked the A Wheeling warrior trophy. While inside the secret area, I meditated in every spot in the game, defeated the third and final dual boss in the chapter, obtained my first ever Bow King's Iron Horn, and stumbled into the Golden-Eyed Beast Slayer, which has layers and layers of attacks just like an onion. This fight is what happens when you give a frog too much ketamine, and make him do Elden Ring combos. Oh, don't forget to make him into a running fanatic. I'll just cut the bitching and kill him like a real man instead. After completion of the secret area, I obtained three more pieces of the Bow King's Iron Horn, and killed a spicy frog immediately after. Sup, Bo King, where's my relic? I got you, fam, but before I do, there are some imposters among us. Ah, shit, I've been made! Father must have seen me fence in Med Bay. Well, Red Boy, now is the time to go back to school because you're about to get disciplined. Well, the mistake that your son is dealt with. And finally, the fifth relic is in my hands. You were supposed to tell me that this imposter killed the crewmate! Well, it doesn't matter. It's not like the relic amplifies his powers through the roof. Did you pray today? Cause if you did it, I'ma have to dig you down on some bullshit. It's a hold on! It's a hold on, dear! It's a hold on, dear, Lapsa! The most BS attack has to be his ranged move. Just look at that BS! I can't even see. What's a fucking retarded boss? Dear Enos! You did your Lapsa, dear! God damn it, I was too greedy. Fuck! You can just hold it! Can you. Can you just. Lose the attack, not just hold it in mid-air like Elden Ring. Oh my god, I need to I need to hesitate before I achieve victory. Jesus Christ, what a shit boss. Oh my god, it's just pure artificial difficulty. Lay it on top of each onion. At least my experience is pretty low accurate. At last the fifth relax in my hands. But the events leading up to this moment could have been a lot different. Soon Hong's body was the fifth relic, there's no question. But the two heads here represents the Bow King's dilemma. Pause to read his conflicting choices. Throughout the Bow King's life, he always chooses the wrong choice out of the two options. Mistake number one, he chose to aid Sum Hong in his conquest against heaven, which obviously failed spectacularly. And as punishment, the Bow King's lady Rakshasi is forced to drink from the river of childbearing and give birth to the red boy who loved his father but that love was never repaid mistake number two occurred in journey of the west when the four pilgrims did the princess rashashi's fan due to the lingering hatred he had for sum hong for causing the red boy to exist the bow king defied sum hong but that didn't end well which led to the death of the bow king's concubine hearing the news he was so pissed that he turned into his primal form ultimately his power up was in vain as the heavenly court subdued and gravely injured him however preceding the events of black myth wukong Kong, the Bow King finally got his revenge. But instead of absorbing the relic for its raw power, he kept it safe to honor his friendship with Sum Hong and by extension helping the Destined One. Here is where he messed up. If he were to consume the relic and fight the Destined One, yeah, he would lose, but at least he's immortal. Instead, his son chose to face us, probably because the Heavenly Court has their orders. Over time, the Bow King came in terms of his son's existence, but it was too late. History repeats itself, and this day extracts a heavy toll.
This is so sad. Anyways, Lady Russia, she run them proc as little bro to complete my vessel collection. At the start of chapter 6, I checked out my merchants and NPCs and unknowingly acquired the Brews and Barrels trophy. Ah shit, I think we hit the news as the Heavenly Court sends their soldiers to do their dirty work. Oh, it's the guy we fought earlier. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. That's what you get for turning to my girlfriend to the pill, you, you little bitch. Even though the hand dragged our asses into the sky, me being the gifted destined one, reversed his technique and broke his neck. Damn. We, we, we actually killed someone. Good. Nimbus! Yes, Nimbus. Nice, I have a summer salt cloud of my own, which lets me roam around the map and discovering items more easier. Wait a minute, this area looks suspiciously large. Tongue! Tongue! Long ball ball, did you pray do they? Well, that's the last of them Octobogdos. But he's not alone, there are plenty more bosses after defeating this area. One being the size of a literal mountain. Right after attacking the blue crystals on his legs, I climbed up his arm, which led to the monkey who has been evading me since chapter 1. I then caught him red-handed with the last skanda, but ultimately he gave it to me, which is the skanda of consciousness. With all the five skandas collected throughout the journey, my trusted doctor combined them all together in a furnace, which created the ultimate and final celestial peel. After that, I resumed on my monster hunting adventure, in which four of them dropped Sum Hong's old armor. And with all Sum Hong's armor pieces collected, I'm finally worthy to hold his staff and unlocking the Guardian of Gear trophy. I then finally killed all the bosses in Mount Huego and backtracked into the Great Pagoda to avenge my fallen idol and finish what he started. Oh hey, an achievement. Well, 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 I understand you want my spear right now, but you have to beat me to get it. You see, your pups tried to take me down twice, but he failed all of them. So, Destined One, will you best me or will you fail just like your daddy did? Oh shit. Oh, that cinema! Oh shit. That's hype. Okay. Fuck. I forgot he does that. Fine, now we equip two pieces of bulking armor. Oh my fucking god, I did it! I fucking did it! Jesus fucking Christ! The bull armor set helped! The ring of fire helped! Everything helped! Thank you! Although the battle is won, the war is not yet over. These four heavenly kings think they are cool as shit, but I, the destined one, will not let Sum hold down. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on. <coughs> Hell yeah! Decapitate him! Ah, it's chest. Alright. Hell yeah, bitch, throw it! Good, 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 good. I don't know. Oh my god. Yes, new for me, little bitch. And your pet dragon needs to die too. Damn. It. That's at least a concussion and severe brain damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's shameless. 
Ay, ay, ay. Uh, I wonder how many casualties I inflict this battle has inflicted. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. I didn't know you were chill like that. Come on. Don't die on me like that. Yes. Yes, I discovered the uh, my house within are all the friends I made along the way. Yes. I embrace the flame. Okay, I mean it's heaven. Oh, 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 and he ripped up pieces of heaven. I guess. Ching. Nice one, Dex, you sir, but punch. Ooh. <laughs> Get fucked. Uh, that's what you deserve for killing me for four hours. Uh, in your face, one. You motherfucker. Well, 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 Erlang, you are the two times monkey slayer. But now's the time to update the scoreboard, little bro. Ma, ma, fa. Wait a minute, these are Sum Hong's memories. Why do you have them? My bad, little bro. Did you pay attention to the chapter 5 cutscene? Each of the five Yagwai kings took the five relics, but I took the sixth for myself. Why? Because Sum Hong was my brother. Although I had no choice but to strike him down, the best I can do is preserve his memories. And about that spear. Take it, it's free of charge. In all that time, I unlocked the meets the match achievement, obtained all transformations, and the most important of all, Erlang's sacred spear. Before I advanced any further in Mount Huego, I decided to backtrack and make progress on the harder achievements. I was pretty lucky to have a very good drop rate for seeds, and I only needed two more seeds to unlock the seeds to sow achievement. After that, I worked on a curious collection trophy. The Beast Buddha RNG grind isn't that bad, cause the enemy that drops it is very close to the bonfire. However, the same cannot be said for the Thunder Flame Seal, cause I needed to run extra miles just to get to the enemies that actually dropped the thing. Here you have four chances to get the item. If you don't, womp womp! Just walk around the temple and kill four more. This elusive queue took me around 20 minutes to farm, with the golden carp equipped. I then unlocked the achievements by the most underwhelming way possible. With that done, I worked on the worst achievement in this game, Brewer's Bounty. I understand the drop rates for enemies. Back in my day, I've been farming proofs of a concord caps for five hours. But really, draw rates for plants? Seriously? This sucks because the golden carp can't work on plants. The second thing that's terrible about this achievement grinding is that once you have picked up a plant and the rest at the site of grace, the plant doesn't respawn unless you go to the settings and forward the time by one hour, which is more than enough time for the plants to respawn. It took me around 45 minutes to get the gold skull soak and over an hour for my 26th soak. Oh my fucking god! Finally! Finally! Just kill myself. Well, with the harder achievements almost done, I collected every collectible I missed during my journey, as well as armor pieces dropped by random enemies. Finally, I touched the stone egg, which revealed a soft yet curious amber texture. I stepped into the yoke, which then teleported me into the realm of Wukong's memories, where I faced my final challenge. Nice no excuse, my child, but English or Spanish? Throughout the journey, you have collected all six relics. That's really convenient for me. Now, Destiny, show me what you truly are. This fight is very funny, as you can see. Let's see if it dodges. That's crazy. Oh, I switched. Okay, I switched to pillars. That's that's. What the fuck? Armored Core Six moves steps. Literally for Armored Core Six. Oh shit, he parried me. Fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Show off. Wow, wow, you little bitch. Ah, yes. That was, he was way easier than Erlang, I'm not gonna lie. Erlang with my ass so hard for 4 hours. This guy I first tried. Finally, I was able to get the all 5 relics one by one, as my legs buckled after the fight, and most importantly, successfully retained all of Wukong's memories. Due to me not wanting the video to be an hour long, I've decided not to talk about this cutscene. Anyways, I've done everything I could in base new game, so I instantly started the journey to new game plus, to fully complete my god and soak collection. Collected my last spirit, which I shouldn't have missed, bought the last pure recipe in the game, and speedrun the entire chapter 5 secret area, to finally craft the dark iron staff and the bow king's mask. And just like that, all achievements complete. If you have watched to the end, I thank you very much. Right now, I'm too tired to do an outro, so bye. <laughs>